So what's going on guys, my name is Mr. Dalek JD and welcome to an exciting video where we're going to be talking about brand new information and screenshots relating to the new Zombies map dropping next Tuesday, The Shadowed Throne. Besides the trailer that we got earlier in the week, we haven't heard anything new or seen anything new, but it's all changing as we have some brand new info and screenshots to dive right into. If you guys are excited for brand new Zombies DLC, then make sure you drop a thumbs up and let me know how excited you are for it and what your thoughts on it down below in the comments. But we're going to jump into this as Sledgehammer Games released a very cryptic image on social media which relates to Zombies over on their Twitter. It's very clear this is a Zombies referenced image as this this is just so out of there from what you'd normally see from anything to do with multiplayer but this image is actually a drawing by the mad monk from the darkest shore do you remember the monk head that speaks to us during the easter egg quest on the darkest shore that we help out and we get the spines for well this is the actual monk in question he's the one down on his knees we can see barbarossa on the right page with dark wings on his back and his sword which currently doesn't have the pommel and four knights on the left which seems to be a symbol of guarding now, in this image that you're seeing right here, you probably couldn't have worked it out, but there are three codes within this image that you enter on the Call of Duty website, you know, the classified decoder, which we started using all the way back when the game was first revealed a year ago. Once you enter these three codes, they translate to Beware the Throne. And once entered, you'll find on the clipboard a paper with the Shadowed Throne written on it, and the dossier contains notes from Drostenhain during the time he worked for the Germans on Heligoland, as well as four screenshots of the Shadowed Throne. Let's look into those screenshots first of all, as I'm sure that's what you're most interested in hearing and seeing about, and then we'll dive into the storyline aspects as well straight afterwards. But make sure you're sticking through the whole of the video, as I'm also going to be showing you an exclusive look at one of the multiplayer maps, which is Egypt. The first image we see is a, another angle of this building that we saw within the trailer for DLC 2. And this is really interesting because from other snippets of info which I've seen and from a promotional tweet from Call of Duty about the map pack, it seems that this that we're seeing is actually the front of a corpse museum. So within the actual map itself, there is a zombie museum which we're going to be exploring, which is a big factor. And this has got neon signs on it. It looks really cool and I'm really liking the look of this. This next image is probably the cleanest image we've seen yet of the new boss zombie within the Shadowed Throne and from Cameron Dayton's tweets we now know that this is called the Beast of Berlin. It's obviously the most devastating creation that Straub has launched onto us yet and in the coding for this the zombie is actually called Bob and that stands for the Beast of Berlin so man this thing looks gnarly and we finally get to see a little bit more detail to this guy. He possesses three heads and all the the heads look very different to one another so it could potentially be from three different people that his heads have been fused towards we've got this thing in the middle which spins around one of his arms is this giant cannon it just looks really brutal and i really like the design they have going with all of these different zombie types you got to give credit it's very creative and just looks gruesome this next screenshot seems to be what i assume to be inside the actual museum to the left we see this really interesting statue which I assume to be Egyptian and definitely seems to be the case. I've seen quite a few other community members also point out this statue and that it looks Egyptian in nature. I saw a Twitter conversation between Certain Personio and Johnny J 25 so big shout out to both of you. Both of them recognise this statue to look very similar to the Egyptian gods Ra or Horus. Both Ra and Horus look very very similar and they have very distinct features to them. Both of them are Egyptian deities which are usually depicted as a falcon-headed man wearing a stent or a red and white crown. Interestingly enough, the Egyptian god Horus can also be depicted with wings and as we showed you the teaser image at the start of the video, that sketch of Barbarossa with wings also lines up very well to the idea of Horus being depicted with wings. We don't quite know the significance of why Sledgehammer Games are referencing Egyptian gods within this map. Perhaps this is teasers of things to come in future DLC maps in involving Egyptian history which would be really really cool. We've always wanted a zombies map set in Egypt and maybe we might get it. It doesn't really make sense in the scheme of World War II but 
we can always hope, right? And to round it off, we're getting another shot from outside what we assume to be the museum. And you can see there is a lot of buildings in the background. And you can see this like spiry tower, almost like a castle of sorts. Looks really, really cool. And to note as well, the sky looks a little bit different to what we saw it inside the trailer. It almost looks like part of it seems to be quite nice and, you know, dark blue, like setting in the sort of evening time. But of course, there's lots of smoke and rubble because the surrounding surrounding area is on fire. Also, what we don't get to see is in the promotional tweet that I saw, it also mentioned about a zombie Zeppelin. Now we do see in the trailer a huge Zeppelin shooting down and actually physically changing the zombies, but there seems to be a Zeppelin that belongs to Dr. Straub and one which Dr. Straub is controlling and using to try and stop us during our attempts to, you know, defeat him on this map. So that's really intriguing. But let's move on to the actual dossier notes from Drosten Hein. Now this perspective of when he wrote this is when he worked for the Germans on Heligoland. So that means before we visited it on the Darkest Shore. We knew he's been there before, but we didn't know any other intel besides that. And finally, Sledgehammer are giving us a little bit of backstory. This goes in with the Drosten files that we've been getting every week from the Sledgehammer blog. The first one on screen here says, so if they're not gonna pay me in marks and I'll make sure that I'm compensated in some other way. Drosten doesn't work for free. Speaking of which, I had a chance to sit down and go over some of the pages I liberated. More illustrations by the Mad Monk Heligoland. Much of the text has been rendered illegible due to water damage and my own subterfuge. Had to tuck the pages in my knickers while crossing the security checkpoint. Let's just say there's not a lot of extra room in there for antiquities, but better folded up in my trousers and framed in some German estate. Now looking on the second page, we can see where our image that I showed you guys at the start of the video comes from. Did a quick rendering of the pages here, not my best work, but helps to dissect the layered symbolism when I drawn them myself. Four knights, symbol of guarding, protecting, black wings, regal sword. I believe this is the monk. He thinks the knights are angels, worship or fear. Sword lacks a pommel. Why the dark wings? Not angelic. The monk is no expert on armor or weapon, but why wings? Makes no sense. Next page. Text from what I can decipher relates the story of how this monk arrived on Heligoland to convert the locals to his faith. They weren't having it. Decided he would be their next sacrifice to dear old Nerthus. Not a kindly goddess. Apparently these four knights arrived in time to save his Kaister. Record gets kind of loopy then. Winds and lightning and magic weapons. Dead cultists. He ended up alone on that island, guarding the raven's egg, he wrote. Then he died. So what it means by the raven's egg is the head, which we get Barbarossa's pommel from. Anyway, the final page, things would happen on the island, fog rolling in with sounds that didn't belong. <laughs> I got headaches with some frequency. Himmler said Heligoland was the German Atlantis, a nexus point of electromagnetic energy. I didn't find anything to validate that, but did uncover some artifacts that resembled Paleo-Indian tools, like those found among the Yang. Odd. The tools cause any electronics to go haywire when brought near and our radio would screech unless we tuned into 38.9, 38.7 after a minute we heard voices. I threw the radio into the sea that night. I don't exactly get what all the references are for. Perhaps some are setting up for the lore within the Shadowed Throne. But all I know is that it involves a corpse museum and a zombie zeppelin. The Call of Duty's wording is that Dr. Straub has taken a stand atop a zombie zeppelin and you must stop him. So it sounds like it's going to be pretty darn interesting indeed. And I can't wait to get our hands on it next Tuesday on April 10th. And you can always count on me to be live streaming the map and hunting for that Easter egg as soon as the map goes live very early on Tuesday morning UK time. I've already seen but quite a few YouTubers have played DLC 2 and I wasn't one of them. I've not played DLC 2. I didn't go to an event this time around so you'll be seeing some early gameplay of multiplayer and probably early zombies but what I've got for you guys now a multiplayer map overview of the Egypt map in DLC 2 just because we touched earlier about Egypt and I do feel like if they were to explore this theme within zombies it would make for a truly incredible zombies experience because we've never had Egypt as a locale and if there ever was to be it would truly be amazing there's so much amazing history all the Egyptian deities and gods it's just crazy what could be done with zombies in a great way so here's a look at the multiplayer map but again guys if you enjoyed drop a thumbs up and I'll catch you guys tomorrow for another zombies video this is our series called map briefings where we're going to give you the information you need to know before going to battle today we're going to look at Egypt
I'm Matt Abbott, lead artist for multiplayer at Sledgehammer Games. And I'm Gabriel Galaz, multiplayer level designer at Sledgehammer Games, and we worked on the maps for DLC 2, The War Machine. For Egypt, we focused on a British encampment stationed at the Giza Plateau in order to control the Suez Canal. The Suez Canal was the key to keeping the war machine rolling as it gave access to critical resources. We actually get to play on the Sphinx, the temples, the ruins, we were really bringing you to the heart of Egypt. And in the center of the map, we have this temple that's kind of trapped in time. The resistance class is gonna be a really good option. You're gonna scramble the mini-map radar of your enemies. So you're gonna have those options where you're like, where could they be? Because there is lots of verticality, lots of different options for you to outmaneuver them. So for objective modes, you're generally gonna spawn in these areas back here. The nice thing is you have these structures here and here, which are pretty defensible. The artillery emplacement over here also has some half cover that's pretty solid. Um, this location has some full cover as well, and they have a second story you can get on top of. So one of the, the sneakier positions on the map is here at the Water Temple. You can get on top of this structure here. You could take this wing from this crashed airplane and run and jump mantle up onto there. You can uh, pick off players that are running through here unsuspectingly. Something really cool about the center temple is the, the columns that are in there. There's not only great mid-range fights and close-range fights in there, but chunks of the columns will come off. So there's gonna be a lot of chaos, a lot of destruction going on in there. It's so in this temple, this is probably where the most action is happening. Now people are gonna be coming in from these entrances here. They're gonna be getting in gunfights around these columns and probably the most outwitting maneuver in the map is coming up on top of this and you have this very sneaky path going through this secret kind of shortcut and dropping into the cauldron that's in the middle of this room. You'll get the jump on anyone in there. You'll land on that cauldron and you have kind of a elevated view of this entire room. And from there, you can get the jump on people. Did I draw? <laughs> the Sphinx, the pyramids, temples, sarcophagus, hieroglyphics. We try to put just as much as possible in there to make our players feel like they are really immersed in an Egyptian setting. So we hope you appreciate what we've put in there and we hope you have fun playing it.